Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geeky Limited Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Now in this tutorial we're going to learn how we can play videos directly within the application. We're going to rely on two frameworks, our AV Foundation and our AV Kit, which in turn allows us to use the AV player to play videos directly from within the application. Now the great thing about it is we can play videos very, very simply. We can either get code to trigger our AV player to load up the video or we can have our users press a button. It's really that simple. And once they interact with it, it's then going to load up our video player and then begin to play our video. We're going to have all the usual controls such as pausing, fast forwarding, rewind and even skipping on the timeline so we can go straight to the end of the video, whatever our user feels. And once they're done, we can press our simple done button in our player and it takes us directly back to our application. It's a very simple process in terms of how to play video, so let's get started. Now this tutorial has been taken directly from our iOS 10 and Xcode 8 complete Swift Free and Objective C course, where you can create fantastic, fun, addictive and very useful applications and games with over 40 hours of video content within Swift Free and Objective C. And if you check out the link in the description, you can get this course with a huge discount only using the link down below. So make sure you go check that out and let's begin with this tutorial. Having the ability to play video files within your applications is a great way to display content to the user. Not only does it not take up that much space on the screen because the video gets played within its own video player that appears over the top of the application and once the user's finished watching it, it then dismisses and goes back to the application. It's also a simple and easy way for them to kind of get a message or see content without having to read or anything like that, a video just simply plays for them. Now you may be thinking this could be quite a strenuous task to perform, but it's actually not. So far in the course, we've displayed images and we've played audio files within the project. And that's ultimately all revolved around adding a file to the project and then either using code or kind of presetting it to then display within the application. And one of the great things about creating iOS applications is the fact that it does everything for us. We just need to provide the file and tell it when to play and then it has all the inbuilt capabilities to display this content. So before we go any further then, I have a website loaded up at the moment called www.sample-videos.com. So this is a great and brilliant website which allows you to download free sample videos that you can use in any of your projects. Now obviously you don't want really to use these for commercial uses, but it's a great way to get free sample videos. And I think I've got the 5 megabyte um, 1280 by 720 video here as I just load it up now. So it's a simple sample video that we're going to be using. It's only a 30 second clip and it contains visual animation with audio. As you can see, it plays now. So we're going to be adding this into the project. Now you can either choose to go to this website and download the video or it will be provided in a downloadable section attached to this lecture. So we're going to drag and drop this video file into our project and make sure we select Destination, copy if needed, and we add it to our targets and then press finish. Now, like many things that we do within our applications, sometimes we may need to rely on certain frameworks to give us the ability to perform certain tasks. And to play video, we need to rely on two frameworks, uh, the AV Foundation framework and the AV Kit. And these will allow us to create our video players, have all the capabilities to hold the video, give us the controls such as displaying the timeline, fast forwarding, pausing, you know, making it full screen, all the features we need for a standard video player, these frameworks have, we can reference them and use them. So we're going to go to our build phases and we're going to add in these um, kind of frameworks now. So drop down our link binary of libraries and click the little plus symbol. And then type in AV. We're going to need the AV Foundation and the AV Framework here of our AV Kit and add them both into our project. Once we've got them both in, I'm going to jump into the view controller.swift and just make sure that this class is aware of both of these frameworks. So when we do come to code it to get the video to start playing, they're already there. We can reference everything we need to then get the video to play. 
So I'm simply going to import, and I'm first going to import my AV foundation, and then import my AV kit. There we go. Let's get rid of that space there. So we've got both of those frameworks now in. So let's jump into our main Dutch storyboard then. So how are we going to get the video to play? Well, you can simply trigger it in many ways. You can have it kind of load up if your user does something in the application, or you can get it to load up if your user presses a button and triggers it. So just for the purpose of this lecture, we're going to use a button to display it. So what I mean by you can get it to trigger anywhere, the code that we're going to be placing within this button is what is used to trigger the video to play. So you can take it next step further. Maybe you're creating a game and your user completes a level. You can then trigger a video to pop up, which would be like a cutscene to the next level. There's great stuff like this you can do with it. Or maybe you've actually just got a um, kind of application where you're creating a portfolio and you're displaying your work. Maybe you're you know, like a music producer and you want your music videos in an application. Again, this is another great way to get this content across to the user. So we got the button. I'll bring it to the top there and I'll space it out a bit. I'm going to click on the files owner and I'm now going to bring up the assistant editor. So from within here, I'm going to create this button as an action so we can press it and trigger our video to play. So I call it play video and add that in. Right, we got that in. We'll close down the assistant editor now and we'll jump back in the standard editor. Let's go to our viewcontroller.swift. So, so we need to create a couple of variables to allow us to do what we need to do to hold the video in a video player to play it. So we're going to create two variables there. Our first one, create our VAR here, is going to be our player controller. And that's simply going to equal our AV player, just write it now, our AV view um, player controller there. Now two brackets at the end. And our next one, do another variable. I'll just simply call this player, and this is going to be linked to our AV um, player underneath, and our question mark there. So we're going to be using these two to display to our user, which is going to hold the video, which gives us all the video controls, you know, the ability to pause, and ultimately the ability to press done when we finish watching the video and then go back to the application. Now, if you followed along in some of our previous lectures where we displayed and played audio within the application, we're going to be using a very similar method to what we did there. And that is we create the ability to first locate the file, in our case now, the video file within our project, and then place that inside the player that we're going to display. And this is all going to take place within the view did load. So we're going to create a let, and this is going to be our video, I'm just call it our video string, because ultimately we are creating a string linked back to our file name. And then we do our colon, and link that to our string, and our question mark there to equal, and then we got allocate our video file through our project directory. We're gonna kind of fork out the name and the format of it and equal it and create it into a string and then convert it into a NSURL for our player controller to read it. So what we simply equal this to is our bundle, our overall project. Dot main, then what we do then is our dot path for resource and within here it allows us to then select one of the files that we've added in our project so in this highlight section here of our string we do our two kind of quotation marks there and inside of it we now name again the name of that file which in our case happens to be called video of type we do our two quotation marks and if you can guess what this will be this is uh, what type of file is this well it's a .mp4 file let me end that with a bracket so our video string now equals that file, again, within a string. It's formatted in a string as our video.mp4. So what we need to do now then is simply create an if statement. Now the reason we create an if statement is we simply do if, and we create a let called our URL, and it's going to equal simply our video string. So if it equals that, which it's going to straight away because we're doing this within the view did load. So if it equals this, we're going to create an additional let called our video URL and we need to convert over our video string into an NSURL so our AV player and player controller have the ability to read it and play our video file. So we simply equal this to an NSURL. Then we do our bracket with our file URL with path. Now the 
string that we're placing inside here is going to be linked back to our video string. And we set it up for our letter of our URL to equal our video string. So we type in our URL and that with a bracket. So now what we need to do is set up our AV player to load and have our kind of string preset up of our URL inside of it. So we do self dot player to then simply equal our AV player bracket URL. And then here we place in our video URL. So we're working with the variable before, which again is linked up to our URL, which goes back to our video string, which contains our format. And we do this as a capital URL. Now, the reason we convert into URLs, that's the only kind of thing, and then this URL is the only thing um, that our player control, um, controller, our AV player view controller, has the ability to read. That's how it gets formatted. So all we need to do then is link up our player to our player controller. So we do self dot player controller, and we want to work with the dot player attributes of it, uh, the attribute that plays the video. And we're going to equal this to our self dot player. Now our player has all the kind of um, attributes as all the settings linking all the way back to our video file. So within the view to load, then this as soon as the application builder runs and it loads up, it finds our video file. Pre-configured, it sets it all up and places it inside of our player controller all ready to play. The only thing that's missing is the ability to then trigger it. And that trigger occurs within our button. So we need to present this um, video player to our user. So we do self.present, if I can just quickly find it now, there we go, present here. And what we're presenting is our self.player controller. Animated, we're going to select true, creates a nice fading effect. And this highlight section here, we're going to do parentheses, press enter, because we're now going to be presenting something to the user. And by presenting this to our user, we also want to trigger the video to play at the same time. So when he presents the video player to our user, within the parentheses, we're also going to do self dot player controller dot player, which is the video player itself, to a question mark there, dot play. So then, then start to begin to play the video within the video player controller. So let's go to build and run and see that, well basically let's see this happen in front of our eyes. So now it's built and run, I can press the play video and it pops up and starts automatically playing our video within our project. So it does all the preloading for us and the view did load so there's no strenuous tax that the button has to go through once it's triggered, but it automatically starts playing it as soon as it gets presented to our user. So if we click on it, we have all the usual controls. We can drag it back, we can fast forward it there, we can pause it, we can play. We can kind of make it almost full screen as we zoom in there because of the kind of format of the video there. And once we finish playing it, we can press our done button and it takes us directly back to the application. So there we have it. We have the ability to add video files to our project and display them in a unique video player, all native to iOS development. But this is just simply playing a video file. Now video files can be huge in memory. That's only a simple 30 second clip and it's already five megabytes. So if you add in multiple videos, you'll notice that your overall application size will start to increase. So what other alternative methods can we do? Well, in the next lecture, we're going to be looking at how we can live stream video from fixed URLs directly within the application. And there we have it. We can now simply play video within our applications. Why is this great? Because it's a way of getting our message across without displaying vast amount of information on the screen or giving our users loads of instructions, or you just simply want to give them a new form of content within the application. Videos are a great way to do this and you've just done it. So I want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you all in the next tutorial.